and in this video we're going to be talking about form in Swift UI. So form is a view in Swift UI that allows us to easily create views with structural context, i.e. you could have a setting screen and I have done this in my previous video, build a setting screen in Swift UI which you should check out. In this video though, we're going to take a look at building a form and how it allows you to enter information for a new contact. So let's get straight into it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually just build our form with some UI to see what it looks like. So let's create a new Swift UI view called create contact view. Now let's add in a navigation view onto the screen and inside of it, we'll create a form with a title called add contact. So we'll type this one out together. So in order to build out a form, the first thing we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to remove this. And then we're just going to start typing out navigation view because we want to give our form a title in the header. So let's do that now. And then what we want to do in order to show form is actually use the form view. So if we just type out form and then we'll give this form a navigation title and we'll just say add contact. Cool. So now you're not actually going to see anything. And the reason why is we've not added any content into our form yet, which is what we're going to tackle soon. So now the screen is going to be presented as a sheet over our content view. So I actually want to add in two buttons. So one to cancel and one for done to actually confirm saving the contact into our source of truth. So we'll build a screen together. So let's actually add in two buttons into our navigation view using the toolbar modifier. So on your form, underneath your navigation title, if you just type out dot toolbar, and then you want to use the first one where you get the content. And then in here, we're going to create two toolbar items so we can have one for our done and one for our cancel action. So I'm just going to type it out and then we'll break it down. So we've got our tool toolbar items. So what we're saying here is we want to have a confirmation action. So this is um, why this gets this like bold style. If I just zoom in, so the done button gets like a bold style. And we just got a button in it for done and we'll handle the done action later. And then also as well, We've got our placement here, navigation bar leading, which means on the left hand side, and we've just got a button with a roll of cancel. So notice how when we specify on our toolbar item, if we want a confirmation action, it automatically places it on the right hand side here and you get this style for free. So now that we've got the skeleton of our view ready, let's actually start building out our form. But it's actually worth noting that we're only going to focus on the UI for now and then look at modeling the data next. So in our form, let's create a section called general. So now we've got our section on the screen here. And if you want to learn more about sections, then check out my video in the Swift UI sessions playlist called Sections in Swift UI. So in our section here, we specify that we want the header, which is why you can see the header here. And we've got a footer with the footer content here. And we just specify the header prominence of increase. So it's saying here that we want you to give it like a bold title so it stands out. So as you can see here, we actually don't have any content in here. And that's what we're going to do now. So let's actually add in some text fields to actually capture the user's prefix, first name, last name, and company, company info. Okay, cool. So we've added in four text fields here. And as you can see, when you add it into a form with text fields, you automatically get this styling for free. So you can see here that we get all our text fields and they're all like grouped together because we specify that we want them all to be within this section. So that's pretty nice. So now that we have our first section, what I'm actually going to do is break this up into a computed property since I don't want this form to actually get too big and difficult to read. So let's actually split this up and we'll be doing this for all of our sections. So just below your preview, if we just type out private extension on create contact view. And then within here, we're going to create a computed property for each section within our form. So the first one we're going to do is general. And then all you just need to do is just literally copy all this. So all of this section in here, or quite I should say, and then you want to paste it inside of here, like so. And then now we want to reference this within our form. So if we just type in here, general. And now you should notice that we get the exact same view as we did before but this time we're not cluttering up our form view we're breaking up our views so it's nicer to read now before we move on to our next section we're going to make some improvements to the text fields with the information that you're able to input within them so i want to actually change the keyboard type for each in relevant input and also the text content type as well so this will allow us to basically give our user suggestions on what should be entered in this text field for its context and if you want to learn more about this then check out my video text fields in Swift UI. So let's actually just scroll down. And on our prefix, 
we want to actually set the text content type to be prefix, name prefix. So now this will know the context for this text field is for someone who's entering it a name prefix. So let's do that now. And now on our first name, we're going to do a similar thing. So on our first name, we're going to do a similar thing, but this time we're going to specify a name and then we're going to set the keyboard type to be name phone pad. So I'm just going to type out the rest and then we'll break them all down. So we've given our text field here the name prefix and we've also given our first name here the name content type as well as the name phone pad keyboard type. And we've also specified here the last name with the family name. Keyboard type should be name phone pad as well. And then just on our last text field, we've only set it to be a organization name. So this is just pretty useful when you're working with text fields to give them more context in terms of like helping with accessibility. And also when someone's working with a keyboard as well, they can also get the right keyboard that suits the right context for your text field. So now let's build our next section that will allow you to enter their email and their phone number. So what I'm just going to do below our general is just create a new section and we'll break it down. So we just got another set of text fields here and this time we're capturing the user's phone number and email and we've set the appropriate text content types and keyboard types. So now let's actually use this contact in our form to see what happens. So underneath your general, if you just type out contact and if we just run this again on the preview, you'll now see that we now have our section. So notice how in this time in this section, we've not actually specified a header or a footer so we don't get either one of those, but it still groups our content for us because they're related to each other. So cool. So I want to actually add two more sections. So one for emergency contact and another to actually clear all the data in the form. So let's create this new section. And for this, we're going to use a text editor and a toggle. So let's create a new section for handling this and learn more about these controls. And in order to learn more about them, you can check out my videos, text editor and Swift UI and toggle in swift ui which are both in the swift ui sessions playlist so let's just do this now so first of all we're going to create our section emergency just below our contact so as you can see here we've just got our section we've got a toggle with a label and we're just setting the concept it is true because we're not binding this to some kind of source of truth just yet and then i've also got a text editor as well which just allows us to do multi-line text entries so let's see how this gets rendered out in our form so we just go up and then below our contact if we just type out emergency and hit resume so you'll now see that we again we didn't give our section a header but we did give it a foot at this time and the foot has been rendered out cool and we've now got our emergency contact and you can see that our toggle here our label and our toggle and then also our text editor is actually not um like a big box it's actually just similar to our text fields so we're able to still type in this. The only difference is, is that it's not going to be multi-line. So that's something to check out for when you're working with text editor in a form. And then finally, let's actually add in a button to easily reset all the information that we've just typed in if we wanted to. So let's create a new section called clear all. So as you can see here, we've got a simple button and this role of it has been set to destructive and the label is just some text saying clear all. So let's see how this gets rendered out in our form. So underneath emergency, if I just type clear all, you'll now notice that we have our button and we also get our style for free where we get the red destructive style. But this time notice something, we didn't actually have to embed this within a section and it's still separated out of the content. So that's something to keep in mind when you're working with forms. So the only time you really want to use section is if you want to set some kind of section header or footer, or you want to group together a bunch of views where you give them a header and footer. But in this case, we don't want to do that. We just want to have a button on the screen. So we actually don't need a section. And by default, the form will automatically separate the content for us. So now that we've got our form out of the way, what we actually need to do now is hook it up to some kind of data source. So let's build a struct that we will use to bind that input to. So let's create a new file called new contact. And then within it, let's create a struct for holding our data. Now, I don't want my struct to be huge with a bunch of properties because our form has a lot of information that we need to process. So instead, we're going to use and group nested structs so that we can get nice, cleaner properties. So in order to do this and achieve it, we're going to use something called extension so our structs can create different models within it. Let's actually write this out now. So the first one I'm just going to tackle is our general section. And we're going to store this within a struct called general. So let's do that now. Cool. Let's just break this down quickly. So what we're saying here is that within our new contact, we've got this general property, but this general is actually a struct within new contact. So we do that by saying here extension 
on new contract, I want you to have this struct here called general. So let's just say we want to access this type here instead of us doing this. You'll see that when this compiles, it won't actually work. So in order to access it, what we need to do is use a namespacing like so. And now you'll see that we don't really get too much of an error, but we're able to access the property if you wanted to, like so. So we actually don't have any issues. So this technique here is called namespacing, and it just allows us to organize our code so we can kind of give our classes some kind of relevant context. So we're going to be doing this for the rest of our models within our new contact struct. So what we're going to do now is actually look at our next one, which is contact information. And we're also going to look at the emergency one as well. So I'm going to type it all out and then we'll break it down. So just on a similar thing here, where we're just embedding these structs within our new contact. So we've now got contact information and we've now got emergency inside of our new contact struct and we're just accessing them like so. We have our contact information and our emergency and we're just accessing it the same way we did with our general. So just before we go hooking this up to our view to bind the information, I actually want to capture the user's gender. So let's create a new enum that will allow us to use a picker to do this as well. So on our new contact general, I actually want to add a property here, gender. So let's do that now. So just below here, we're just going to say extension on new contact general, because we want the picker to be within our general struct. And then in here, we're going to create an enum gender. So I'm going to, put, I'm going to type this out and then we'll break it down. So we've got our enum gender within our general structs now. And what I've said here is I want it to be a string um, so that we can access the case as a string if we wanted to. And I've given it a default value for NA. And then I also want this to be identifiable because I actually want to be able to loop through all of these cases within our picker. And then finally, I actually want to make it case iterable so I can just access all of the cases from the actual enum itself. So now what I want to do is actually add this gender as a property to our general. So let's do that now. So just underneath prefix, we're just going to type out var gender. And then now we're able to access the gender like so. Cool. So finally, before we actually go into hooking this up, let's actually create an empty version of our new contact so that when our view appears, it automatically has a new contact to bind to. So I'm just going to break this down. So on our new contact, we've created a static property where we can access a new contact by just saying dot empty. And then I've created a general, uh, pause. I've created a general value here with all the information and uh, a default gender. So the default gender here is going to be the first case in our enum. And then I've got the contact information, uh, emergency, and then also we're just returning a new contact with all this information within it. So this is just literally just an empty contact. It's got no user information stored within it. So this is just think of this as your base. So now let's actually look at hooking this up to our create contact view. So we'll actually create a new view model called contact view model with a published property for holding our new contact also. So let's just create a new file called create contact view model. So we've got our view model here. We've marked it as an observable object because we want to observe the changes that happen to the published properties within this view model. And then I just created a published property here called new contact. And it's simply just using the dot empty that we created before. So we can use the dot notation here because we specified it as a static variable. So this is going to be an empty contact within here. So now let's actually create an instance of this within our view. So if we go into our create contact view if we just scroll all the way up. Let's just create an instance of that view model within here. So we've now got our state object in here and we're just creating an instance of it and we're just marking it as VM, which stands for view model. Now we need to actually handle binding the inputs to our published properties. So now let's do this together for each section. And if you wanna learn more about bindings then check out my video bindings in Swift UI. So if you just scroll down, so on this text field here, we want to bind this to the prefix in our general struct. So just so this is easier for you to see and clearer, I'm just going to create a new panel here where we just look at our model side by side. 
So we actually want to bind this whole section to the properties within this property here, general. So prefix, um, gender, first name, last name, company. So we'll tackle the gender in a second when we actually look at building our picker. But for now, let's just bind the prefix, first name, last name, and company. So if we just remove this, and then we want to use dollar sign and then VM, and then we want to access the new contact, and then we want to access general, and then we want to bind this to our prefix. So now, whenever you type within the text field, whatever value is in that text field will now automatically be bound to the prefix property within our general object. So we want to do this for the rest of them. So let's do this for first name. So I'm just going to be a bit lazy, but I'm going to copy and paste this. And then make sure that you change this to first name. And then we want to do the same for last name. And then for this section, finally, we also want to do the option for company like so. So now this whole section is bound to our general property here. So let's move on to our next one. So we've got our contact information. So we want to do a similar thing, except this time we don't want to access general, we want to access contact info. So let's do that now. As you can see here, so now we're accessing the contact information's phone number and that's being bound to this text field. And then we also want to repeat this, but this time we want to do it for email. Sweet. And then let's move on to our emergency section. And then similarly again, we just want to do it for the emergency. And then we want to this time use the toggle to be bound to is emergency and then this to be bound to notes. So let's just remove this. And then replace this with emergency and then is emergency and then replace this so all of our controls are now bound to our source of truth where they're going to write updates and read from as well so just to see this working in action for the rest of this tutorial, what I'm just going to do, so you can actually see the keyboard and whatnot, is just run this on the simulator. So let's just run this on the simulator. So when you run it on the simulator, you won't actually see anything. And the reason why that is, is because right now, our content view is the main view in our app. So in order to change that, if you just go into your test app project and then change content view to create contact view and then run it again, you'll now see that you'll see our form. So when I click on this, because I've disabled the keyboard, you'll now see our keyboard and we're able to actually type within them as well. So you're not actually seeing it now, but what's actually going on is that whenever I type in one of these fields, it's actually sending it back to our source of truth. And we will see this in a second, but before we do that, I actually wanna handle adding in a few more things. So I want to handle adding in a gender picker. I also want to do some basic validation as well with the done button. And I also want to implement the clear all functionality. So let's tackle this now. So let's actually add in our gender picker first to see what this looks like. So in our general computer property, let's actually add in a picker to see how it gets rendered within our form. So if we just go back and I'm just going to close, just make this a bit smaller. So let's go down to our general and then um, after the last name we're just gonna add in a picker so I'm gonna add I'm just gonna type this out and then we'll break it down. So what we've got here is we just got a picker with picker with a label and we say that the selection of the picker is going to be bound to the gender property within our source of truth model. And then we're saying here that we want to loop through all the possible gender cases and then we're just going to access the raw value and then make them uppercase. So this raw value here is actually the string type that we specify. So this is actually going to be male in lowercase, female in upper or in lowercase. And also when it's NA, it will just be prefer not to say. So if we actually just run this on the simulator, so you'll now see that we actually have our picker 
in our form here and when we tap on it it actually takes us to a view where we're able to make a selection they automatically updates our view here but it's also worth noting as well that when you're working with pickers you're not just limited to this one style you can actually use different picker styles depending on what you want in your form so just briefly what i'm going to do is add them all in all the styles and then we'll break down each one so we've added in all of our different picker styles now so let's just run this and see what happens Cool. So now, when you look at your form, you should see that you have all these different styles. Let's just go through each one. So the first one here is our picker within automatic style. So this is just a system deciding how it wants to render that picker, which is what you see here. So on an iPhone, the system thinks that the picker should look like this within a form where you get the options to select it on a different view. And then the next one that we have here is the picker wheel style. So as you can see here, we have our wheel with all of our options that we can scroll through and it updates as well. And then the next one that we have here is menu. So with menu, you actually get this label here where if you tap on it, you get this little context menu here where you can choose the option that you want. And then we also have inline as well. So inline actually at puts our label at the top here where it's not selectable. So you can see here, gender is here. And then we get all our options that we're able to select through within our form. And then finally, the last one we have is segmented. So this just gives us a segmented control that you can tap within your form. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the automatic style and just let the system use its default. And it's just worth showing you this so you can see how you can actually customize your pickers within forms and the way that different styles affect them. So let's just remove this now. Cool. So now let's just rerun this. And we should see now that our picker is looking just how we want it to be. Okay, sweet. So I'm actually realizing here that I'm actually using the Swift UI. I'm using the um, simulator more than the actual Swift UI previews here. So let's actually just stop running this. <laughs> and uh, let's just go back to our Swift UI previews because that is that is actually a big task having to hit run every single time. Right, cool. So let's just use our Swift UI previews for now until we actually need our simulator in a bit. Sweet. So the next task on our list was to add in basic validation. Now, what we want to do is we only want to allow the user to be able to tap done here if they filled out all of the mandatory fields. Now the mandatory fields that I'm classing as important is the prefix, first name, last name, and gender is kind of already set in our model to be male by default, and also phone number as well. So in our view model, we're going to create a computer property that will tell us if this new contact is valid. So let's go into our create contact view model. And then when in here, we're just going to create a computer property that tells us if the form is valid. So I'm just going to do this now. Cool. So what we've got here is a computer property. And we're just saying that if the prefix, first name, last name, and phone number is not empty. So if all four of these properties are not empty, then the form is valid. So if you actually want to learn more about how to use more complex, you know, uh, validation, you can actually use something called regular expressions and I actually do do this in a video that I have called form validation in Swift UI. So you should probably check that out. So now we actually want to change the color of our button and also disable interaction with it if our form is not valid. So on our button, we actually want to use the modifier called disabled. So let's actually just do this now. So on our done button, if you just hit enter and then you type disabled, what we're going to say here is that the view model is valid. So what we're saying here is that if the view if the view model is not valid, then we want to disable this button here. So rather than actually running this on the simulator every single time, let's actually make use of the Swift UI previews. So if we just run this on the Swift UI preview now, and then if we just start typing in here, you'll notice that our button is still gray, but as I keep on typing, you'll now notice that our button turns blue. And the reason why that is, is because like we said before, we need all of these to be filled out before this is able to be interacted with. 
So if you just turn this off, you'll see that it's now grayed out. We can't tap it. So by using the disable modifier, you can see here that we don't actually need to change the color of our button. And we also don't need to specify specifically that we want to disable interactions with it. So now let's actually do our final task, which is what we want to do, where we want to clear the whole form if someone tapped on the clear all button at the bottom here. So back in our view model, and I'm just gonna pin this to the screen. So back in our view model, let's create a new function in here called clear all. So we just got a function here to clear all, and all this is simply going to do is that whenever you tap on it, it's just going to reset the new contact with another empty initialization. So it just sets it back to nothing. So let's go back into our create contact view and within our button all the way down in our clear all inside of here we're just going to call that function from our view model okay cool so now if i just actually type inside of here and if i just turn this on and then if i hit clear all you'll now see that actually resets the whole form for us. But as you can see there, it was a bit sharp and it was a bit like it wasn't really animated. So in order to fix that, all we need to do is just literally wrap this within a with animation block. So this will animate any changes that happen to the form. Cool. So now let's actually just type in here again and just see what happens. And if we now turn this on, and if we hit clear all, you'll now see that we actually get the animation for our toggle, but our text fields just clear themselves, which is what we want. So we now have all of our form kind of working with requirements that we wanted. So let's actually look at how we can present this over our content view. So what we're going to do is in our content view, we're going to create a navigation view, and then we're going to use a sheet modifier to show this form on top of it. So let's go into our content view. So we've now got our like base view that we want to have within our content view here. So I've just got a navigation view and within it, I've got a lazy V stack. And this is where we're going to put all of our views that we're going to um, loop through and display all the contacts on the screen. And then we're just given a title of contacts. So now the next thing that I want to do is actually add in a view where you can display all the information from our model and it'll be each contact within it. So let's just actually just add this in and then I'm going to break it down. Okay, cool. So as you can see here, I just basically got my view and within it, you can see that I just got some text and I've also got um, some dividers that help us separate out some content. And I've also got a stack where we have the emergency contact and we're going to have a chevron where we can actually toggle this up and down, kind of like an accordion. So it's also worth noting here as well that within our text, we're using the double asterisk here with our string within it and at the end of it. And this just allows us to use markdown to say that we want this to be bold. So the next thing I wanna do is actually move this out into its own separate view because I don't wanna clutter up this entire VStack with a lot of this because this is a lot of code. So let's actually create a new view called contact info view. Cool. And then within this view, we're just going to take our VStack that we added before and I'm just going to literally copy all of this. And I'm just going to paste it within here, like so. Cool. So now we actually have our view within our contact info. So what I'm just going to do in this view is I'm actually just going to add in a bit of styling to make this look a bit nicer. So I want to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is on here, we're just going to change the preview layout to be size that fits so it just shows what our component looks like and right now it's really tight to the um, edges so rather than just having padding vertical i'm actually going to give it padding all around like so so that looks a bit better and then we're also going to give it a background so now we've got this in so let's see what this looks like cool sweet so what I've just done here is that at the end of our V stack, I just added some padding within it to give it some space within it. And then also as well, we're given a background where I set the gray opacity to be 0 0.1, as you can see here. So we'll just zoom in a bit more to make it a bit more clearer. 
And then also as well, we've added a rounded rectangle around it with a corner radius of eight and a continuous style. So actually I'm going to increase the corner radius a bit to 12. Okay, cool. Yep, yeah, I think that was better. So let's do 12. And then on our preview, in order to get to look like this, we've now said that we want to make it fit the size of the preview. We want to add some padding around the preview and then we want to set the background of it to white. So now you can see this white background on it within it, so it's clear to see. Okay, cool. So now let's actually use this contact info view within our actual uh, SwiftUI app. So in our lazy V stack, let's just create our contact info view. And as you can see, it looks a whole lot better. So one thing I do want to do is on our lazy V stack, I actually want to add some padding on the left and right hand side because right now it's still really tight. So let's just do that now. So just above your navigation title, if you just say padding and then just say dot horizontal, and you'll now see that it pushes it away from the edges so it looks more like a card now. So this looks a lot better. So now that we have our item in our list, we actually want to create a new source of truth for actually showing our create contact view that we created before. So at the top of your file in your content view here, let's create a state property. So this is going to be our source of truth that we use for controlling whether our create contact view is shown on the screen. So now what I wanna do is I actually want to add a plus button in the top right hand side. So whenever you tap on it, it changes this to true and shows that screen. So let's do that now. So underneath our navigation tab, we've got our toolbar and we have our toolbar placement here with the confirmation action, which is why it's automatically displayed here and it's a bit bold. And we've got our button with a plus SF symbol and we're just going to toggle whether it should show the create contact view. Now, just before we do that, I'm not going to name this a bit better. So should show. Cool. So let's just rename this so it's a bit more descriptive and it makes more sense. So should show create contact. So let's just rename those two properties. Close. So let's just rename those two so it just makes more sense. And now we need to actually attach a sheet to our list so that it shows our view. If you want to learn more about presentation and dismissal of views, then you should check out my video presenting and dismissing views in SwiftUI. So underneath your toolbar, if we just use the dot sheet modifier, and we want to use the is presented, and then within here, we want to use should show create contact. And then our content here is going to be the create contact view, like so, sweet. Okay, cool. So now let's actually just test this out. So now I'm actually going to run this on a simulator because I don't know why, but for some reason, the SwiftUI preview, there's a bug where if you try and open it up again after it's been presented, it won't show it. So in order to get around that, let's just run this on the simulator. And then now you'll see that it's actually showing our form view. So in order to fix this, what we need to do is go into our main app entry and then replace this with our content view so let's run that again and now you should see your contacts so now if you tap on the plus button you'll see that it presents our form like so and we're able to drag down and dismiss it and we tap on it again it will show again but if you hit on cancel or nothing's actually happening and the reason why that is because we've not actually handled dismissing this view when someone taps on cancel so let's actually look into that now so if we go into our create contact view, what we want to do is we actually want to use the environment values to actually handle the dismissal of this screen here. So I'm just going to reduce the size of this to get some more space. Okay, cool. So within our create content view, we actually need to handle the cancel button to dismiss the screen. And we're going to use the environment values dismiss and presentation mode. And I'll explain the differences between them in a second once I type it out. So we've got our dismiss action here. And this dismiss action is actually a new environment value available to us in iOS 15. And we've also got presentation mode here, which is something that you need to use if you need to support iOS 14 and below. So what this will allow us to do is actually programmatically dismiss any view that's currently being presented in SwiftUI. So what I want to do is actually create a function that does this for us. So let's actually scroll all the way down to the bottom and we'll create an extension on our contact, create contact view and then we'll handle the dismissal. So let's do that now. Okay, sweet. 
So now we've got our function here and we've got our dismiss and we're using our presentation mode to wrap value to dismiss. So in iOS 15, we're saying that we want you to use a dismiss environment value. So call this function to dismiss the view that's currently presented. And then in anything below iOS 15, we're going to call this to dismiss the screen. So if we just scroll up in our cancel, we actually want to call that function called handle dismissal. So now if we actually just run this, so I'm just going to do it on a Swift UI preview because I only need to dismiss this once. So if we actually just run this now. Let's go into our content view. Now I'm going to run this on a Swift UI preview because I only just want to test out dismissing it once. So we hit the plus button and if we hit cancel, you'll now see that our view gets dismissed. So that's exactly what we want. Cool. So now we need to handle our done. So what we want to do is that when someone actually hits done on that screen, we want to send back our new contact and also dismiss the screen at the same time. So in order to send back our contact, we actually need to use a closure in our create contact view. So what I could do if I wanted to, is I actually could create some kind of view model that both of these views listen to and you know you can listen to changes to what data was passed back and whatnot but i actually don't want to do that because i feel like it's a big you know it's just an unnecessary view model for just receiving data so instead what we're going to do is actually make our create contact view have some kind of closure to pass this back towards the information that was entered so i actually want this view here to be completely done and just only handle the output that someone has entered within the screen so in our create contact view, let's actually add a closure onto the screen. Cool. So what we have here now is a closure and we're just saying within this closure, whenever we trigger it, we're going to pass through a contact and that contact is going to be the one that has just been created in this view model. So if you scroll down, you should see that you actually get an error here. So in order to fix this, you just want to do this and just give it a placeholder like so. Now that we sorted out that, we actually need to use our closure to actually pass the data back into our content view. So within our done button, let's actually use this closure. So if we just say action, and then within the action, what we wanna pass through here is like I said before, the actual content from our view model. So let's just type that in now. And then like we said before, when someone actually hits done as well, we want to dismiss the form so we're going to call our handle dismiss function and now this should actually handle dismissing and sending us back the data that we need so if we go back into our content view you should notice when you build the project that you actually have an error and this is because we're missing our parameter that we're using for our closure to get our contact back so let's actually add this in cool and then what we're going to do here is we're just going to print to the console and then we're just going to simply just dump our contact as well okay cool so now let's actually see this in action so in order to actually see print statements we do need to run this on the simulator so if we just run this now And if we just hit the plus button and if we just enter some information in. So let's just toggle the keyboard. Sometimes this can mess up. And if we hit done, you'll now see that it dismisses the screen. And in our console, you'll now see our new contact is here with all the information that we just typed in. So you can see that we're actually sending back the data that we've just entered in. But one thing you'll probably realize is that if you look at the console, all the information that's here does not match what is in our list. And the reason why is because right now we just have a static contact info view. So we don't actually have anything in here to actually store the contacts that have been added. So in order to do that, let's actually create a contact view model where we can actually store all the new contacts that have been created. So I'm going to create a new Swift file called contact view model. And then I'm just going to do a bit of typing and then we'll break it down. 
So within this source of truth here, we've just got our array of contacts that we're going to be showing on the screen. And then finally as well, in here, we've got a function where you can actually add a contact into this source of truth that we're going to be using here. So what we wanna do is create an instance of this within our content view. So let's do that now. So now we've got our state object within our content view. So what we want to do first of all is we actually want to use a for each here to actually loop through all the contacts that you see on the screen. So let's just do that. So you'll notice when you add in your for each for your contacts to read through and then display the contact info view, you'll see that we actually have an error. And a reason why we have this error is because our model, which is our new contact, does not actually conform to the identifiable protocol. So let's go into our new contact and then we're going to just make it identifiable. So by doing this, this allows the for each to uniquely identify each new contact that is actually added into our source of truth. And if you want to learn more about this, then you should check out my video for each and identifiable. So if we go back into our content view and we just build our project you should notice that we don't actually have an error anymore. So now that we've done that, the next thing we wanna do is actually add our contact into our source of truth. So let's actually do that after we finish dumping it. So we're just going to say vm dot add contact. Cool. And then now what I just wanna do as well within our lazy v stack is I just want to add in some content to tell you that there actually is no contacts and you should add them with the plus button or else show the list if there are contacts in the list. So let's just do that now. So if our contacts is empty, then we're just going to show some information on the screen. And then if it isn't empty, then we're going to loop through all of the contacts within our source of truth and display a contact info view. So what I'm just going to do now is I'm just going to run this on the simulator so you can see this in action. So you could actually use a Swift UI preview for this, by the way, but I'm just using the simulator. So you can see that we actually have our text here saying that there's no contacts. Please tap the plus to add some. So let's just add in some information. Cool. And if we hit done, you'll now see that we have that contact saved, but the information is still using the static data that we have defined within our actual contact info view. So in order to actually show the information that we've typed in, what we need to do is actually pass our item into our contact info view so it can read the properties that it has within it. So in our contact info view, let's create a new property called item. And its type is going to be new contact and now you should see in your Swift UI preview that you actually have an error, which is fine. So the reason why is because we now need to inject some kind of new contact. So I'm just gonna say in here, dot empty for now. But what you could do if you wanted to is you can actually initialize this with all the information from before. But I'm just gonna give you an empty one because we're going to be using the simulator this time for real to actually test this out. So now within our view, we actually want to use the properties within our item for the relevant places. So let's actually do that now. So for our mister here, we want to use the prefix. So let's just say item.general. So now we've got all that filled in. So we did the first one together. So we've got our gender and we're just accessing the raw value and uppercase in it. We've got our company, our phone number, email, and then finally at the bottom here, we've got our emergency notes that we're going to show here as well. So let's actually just see this in action. So if I just go back to our content view, within our contact info this time, let's actually just pass in our item like so. And then let's just run this and see what happens. So I'm going to actually just enter in any old nonsense. And then we're just going to hit done. And then now we have our information showing on the screen that we entered in. Cool. So it's also worth noting as well that I actually didn't select the emergency contact here. So realistically, what we should be doing is we actually should be hiding this view here. So let's actually look how we can do this. So in our contact info view, 
So we're going to say here is we're actually going to wrap this whole section here and say if the emergency contact is turned on, then we're going to show this view. So let's do that now. So what we're saying here is we're only going to show this divider and anything below it if the emergency is turned on. So if it isn't turned on, then we're not going to show it. So now what we want to do as well is we actually want to handle this chevron. So when someone actually taps on this, I actually want to handle opening and expanding and collapsing this so we can actually see the notes that someone has typed in. So in order to do this, we need to actually add in a source of truth within this file to handle that. So let's do that now. So this is our source of truth for handling whether this notes should be shown or toggled. I'm actually going to change the icon as well. So if you scroll down, depending on whether this is true or false, we're actually going to change this to be Chevron up or down. So I'm going to type it out and then break it down. We're just going to change our SS symbol depending on the state of our source of truth. And then in order for us to actually handle that, you know, animation where it shows and removes the notes, all we need to do is just wrap our text here within an if statement to say, if we do want to show the emergency info, then show the text on the screen or else don't add it. So let's just wrap this in that. So we just do if show emergency info. And then cool. So what we need to do now is we actually need to toggle this state here when someone actually taps on this button to actually allow us to show and hide this section. So let's do that now. Okay, cool. So I've wrapped this in a web animation block so that we can animate any of the changes that you actually see on the um, screen with this toggle. So if you want to learn more about animations and transitions, then check out my video, Swift UI Animation Calls. If you want to learn more about animations and transitions, then check out my video, Animation in Swift UI and Transitions in Swift UI as well. So let's actually just run this on the simulator and see what happens. So if I hit the plus button and if I just enter some random stuff, so we're not actually going to give this contact a emergency contact. So we hit done and you can see here that we don't actually have the emergency contact section at all because we've wrapped it in that is statement. But if I create a new set, a new contract, and we are going to add it, add in a emergency contact. And then if we just hit done, you'll now see that we do get that section. And also as well now, if we actually tap on the button, you'll see that we get that nice animation where we get that accordion style for showing and hiding it like so. Okay, cool. So now it's also worth noting as well that for this to work, where you do this like kind of accordion, for me personally, I've realized that this only works within a lazy V stack or like a scroll view. It doesn't actually work within a list for some reason in Swift UI, I'm not too sure. So at the time of this recording, just keep that in mind. So one last thing I just wanna go through is I just wanna talk about dark mode. So as you can see now, if we actually go into our preferences and toggle the appearance, you'll notice that also as well, if you're using the standard components in Swift UI, we actually get dark mode for free. So we actually don't need to do anything at all. And if we just open up our form, you'll see that our form also gets all the dark mode traits as well. Okay, sweet. So now that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates whenever I do a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.